And it also allowed Europeans and North Americans, when they looked at the great kind of legacy of African civilizations, when they looked, for example, at Great Zimbabwe or the Great Pyramids, they said, clearly black uh, cultures couldn't have created these. These must have been the Hamites, right? Those ancient, highly advanced white invaders who were here thousands of years ago. And so this Hamitic hypothesis became a way of explaining justifying white colonization, as well as all of this cool stuff that you find in Africa, and that was essentially taken away from Africans themselves. Um, there's a very dark side to the Hamitic hypothesis as well, which is this. Even after Europeans left Africa in the 1960s, and these countries became independent, even after the Hamitic hypothesis essentially was exploded as not being true, even after that time, Africans themselves had started to adapt and adopt the Hamitic hypothesis as a part of their own history. So for example, the Batutsi of Rwanda considered themselves as having an origin outside of Africa, and other groups in Africa as well. Um, the Iraqua of Tanzania see themselves as having a Mediterranean origin, not an African one. And this racial conflict between the two groups was something that became important in, for example, the Rwandan genocide of 1994. It was much easier for the Hutu to see the Batutsi as foreign, as literally non-African invaders of their own country, and made it that much easier for them to exterminate them. Now, I'm not saying that's the only reason for the Rwandan genocide, but it was one of the important factors. And so that's the sad part of the story. But there's another part, and I want to end on this other part, which is an interesting part of the story, which is, we really haven't actually gotten back to the original question, which was, if these things aren't true, if Stanley wasn't actually seeing white people in the heart of Africa, then what was he seeing? So I went to Africa in, in uh, 2013, and I actually climbed that mountain that Stanley was looking at, which I was totally unprepared for. I mean, I, I, I run. I thought I was in pretty good shape. But this mountain was 17,000 feet high. There's a glacier on the top of it. And I wasn't really prepared for that. But here I am before I got to that point. Um, <laughs> and uh, I wanted to see, as I told my guide, I wanted to see what Stanley saw. And my guide, who was a uh, member of the Bokonjo tribe, he looked at me and said, there's no white people on the top of that mountain, man. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I know there aren't. I know there aren't. But I want to think about what Stanley saw. And I came up with a provisional hypothesis. And the provisional hypothesis is this. I think Stanley did see difference. I think he did look at people and said, these people do not look anything like these people. We now know that in terms of human diversity, Africa is the most diverse continent in the world. There's more human diversity, i.e. physical diversity in Africa, than any other place. Because within Africa is a much longer evolutionary period of time for the human species than outside of it. So I think he did see human difference. And then it was filtered through, and this is my own theory, and I'm very proud of it. It filtered what I call the Mr. Magoo hypothesis. <laughs> so for those of you who are too uh, young to remember Mr. Magoo, he was this Don Quixote-like figure who was so nearsighted that you would stick him in a room, and he wouldn't really know where he was, and he thought he was somewhere somewhere else. But everything that he like bumped into or knocked into, he interpreted as if he was in that other place because his expectations of where he was were so strong, it filtered virtually all information coming in. And I think that almost all explorers, probably all tourists, suffer from the Mr. Magoo hypothesis, which is that they too, in a sense, filter everything they see through their expectations of what they should see. And I think Stanley, in a sense, wanted to see people who were like him, who were European. He was a desperately lonely man. He was living in Africa for three years, without, oftentimes without anyone else from Europe or North America. And I think, in a sense, he wanted to identify with people and saw this difference, cheekbones, aquiline nose, lighter skin color, and traced that as white. And ultimately, to finish it off, why should we remember this strange hypothesis? Okay, It was a kind of inkblot test for the way people looked at the world. But ultimately, I think we should remember the Hamitic hypothesis, because when we think about master races and Aryan domination, we think about the kind of very short, very violent history of Nazi Germany. 
But in fact, there was a much longer and a much more profound racial theory that continues to exist today, and that is the Hamitic hypothesis. Thanks very much.